Hello YouTube, it's me, old baggy-eyed faithful philosopher. Right, here's proof that the media, ma mainstream media, is manipulating the information we get and therefore manipulating everything. Right, here is... Right, which one shall I play first? Okay, this one I think. Journalists got access to Duma before the inspectors and came out with very different accounts. Some reporting that residents and doctors were adamant in denying that any chemical attack had occurred. Right. So here's the report. This is Saturday night. Now the weapons inspectors, not whatever they were, the inspectors were supposed to go in on Wednesday. And there was nothing in the news. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday day. We had any questions, none of it was brought up. But here we have a report from Saturday night. I'll play it again. Journalists got access to Duma before the inspectors and came out with very different accounts. Some reporting that residents and doctors were adamant in denying that any chemical attack had occurred. So journalists got in before the inspectors. So the inspectors had been delayed. So they didn't go on Wednesday. But there was journalists there. And journalists make reports, don't they? So they were getting reports. The BBC was getting reports before the inspectors got in. Yet they didn't mention it on the news. Now... I would say that wouldn't be the BBC's choice, that would be an instruction from the government that the BBC not talk about it. They want to bury this, right? And you know I was talking about how that, that Windrush affair was something that they could trigger any time. Well I thought of a good word for it. Loaded cannon. So they've probably got others of these loaded cannons you know, like these people that from the Windrush who were um, trying to argue, you know, against their uh, being told that they're illegal immigrants and they were sending their information into the police and then the police were just saying, oh, we've lost it. We've lost it, sorry. So this was a loaded cannon. This was being going on. They weren't going to be helpful, they weren't going to allow these people a voice anywhere. They've got total control. And then until the day they decide they want to fire this cannon, they light the fuse to distract from something that isn't going their way. Um, I might as well just play the, the whole clip. Now, what interesting as well, I'd been waiting for news on this for days, right? And so I'm sitting there Saturday night, listening to the midnight news, think if they're going to mention it, they could mention it tonight. And um, it was the second piece on the, on, the agenda, on the news agenda that night. It was a half an hour news bulletin, it was the second item. And as soon as they started talking about it, as soon as he said, and I think, because they used a different word, usually they say Middle East correspondent, and I'd be like, right, here we go. But he said Arab correspondent. And for some reason, in my head, <laughs> maybe I've got a spirit trying to switch me off, or maybe it's some manipulation in their words. And you, you, you listen to this in a minute, the way they mix up the words. I'll be surprised if most people don't go into a daydream and not really hear what's going on. Right, let's listen to it. Two weeks after the suspected chemical attack in Syria, which led to airstrikes involving UK forces, international experts have conducted an inspection in the town of Douma. The Organisation for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons said its team had gathered samples which would now be analysed. The group's visit to Douma has been repeatedly postponed. This report from our Arab Affairs editor, Sebastian Usher. 
It was the Russian Foreign Ministry that first announced that the visit by the inspectors had gone ahead. The OPCW confirmed this a little later with a short statement in which it said that samples the team had taken in Duma would be sent to its own laboratory as well as to other independent labs around the world. The chemical weapons watchdog said that its fact-finding mission would then compile a report based on these results as well as other information and materials that it's able to collect. It added that after evaluating the situation, it would organize another visit to Duma if possible. This is certainly a breakthrough in efforts to come up with a definitive account of what happened in the then rebel-held town two weeks ago. The delay in the OPCW visit Weird. So then I thought, I thought, oh, they're going to cut it. They're going to get rid of it. Um, but it came back. So I had to do the second part. Do you know what I mean? The w visit was ascribed to security concerns by Russia and Syria, but painted as a potential cover-up by the U.S., Britain, and France. It only encouraged a proliferation of rival theories and accusations to ricochet between the various capitals and across the internet. Journalists got access to Duma before the inspectors and came out with very different accounts. Some reporting that residents and doctors were adamant in denying that any chemical attack had occurred. The inspectors will have been looking for blood, hair and urine samples from victims dead and alive. We don't yet know if they were successful. A fortnight after the attack, experts say that if sarin was used, traces would still be apparent at the site, but that any chlorine would be far harder to find. In any case, whatever the final verdict of the OPCW, it may do little to change the opinions of those whose minds, one way or the other, are already made up. World powers have given a broad welcome to North Korea's announcement. Yeah, and you're not helping, are you? Um, you know, they put chlorine in the tap water. <laughs> right. So, you know, they're going to find some chlorine <laughs> in the tap water. Oh, I've had a bit of chlorine there. Look, because like tap water spill on the floor and like left the residue of chlorine. So this is what we're dealing with, peeps. You know, I think we need a new ism. Uh, nationalism, you know, you should be a, if you, you know, in the same as racism, um, it should be nationism, you know, don't be nationist, just because they're from that nation, don't, you can't generalise, like, occasionally I accidentally attack the Germans, and I don't mean to. And I suppose the thing is, when we're talking about, you know, what are we talking about when we have a go at a country? I suppose it's probably not the people. We are having a go at the, the type of government or kingdom or whatever they are. Um, but it spreads to the people, because if the people kind of put up with it, tolerate it, then they're complicit with it. But we're all people, right? We're all human. We've all got this eternal soul. I mean, that's the key, is to start seeing that you're not just this physical body. And that's what, you know, people are waking up and seeing and will affect their actions accordingly. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not trying to mess with words. I just usually try to let it flow. And that's my been my moral at the moment it's just go is to go with the flow now it's it's happening this is god's plan putting it into action and you know whatever happens if if stuff happens and it gives you sort of an opportunity to forgive <laughs> then you know this is part of god's plan and we're all learning and growing and and it's all good and there's still not been any chemtrails, so I'm really happy. I'm slightly worried that the reason there hasn't been any chemtrails is that the pilots are rather engaged in other places and that they're going to come back and do it. But, fingers crossed, they won't. 
and if they do, I'm going to make a big noise about it, and, um, yeah, because, you know, I can, with the people, we've got free speech, we're allowed to do this, and I would, I would fight for that right to remain, um, to the point of death, actually, so, that be known, thank you very much, bye-bye.